Hello, and this is welcome to the issue at hand. My name is Elizabeth Cannon, and I'm the executive director at the Lowell Association for the Blind. And we're going to be discussing social isolation today. And I have a panel here, and I'm going to let each of these um, women introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about your organization. Sure. I'm Tammy Marshall. I'm from the Thome and Sullivan Center Early Childhood Programs. We have programs for pregnant women, um, families of newborns, and also children under three years old with developmental delays. Um, I'm Rosemary Wing. Um, I work for Circle Home Health, and we do hospice and palliative care. So we go mostly to homes um, with um, various ages, but um, mostly elders. So we see a lot of social isolation. Hi, my name is Saipa Lari. I work at Cambodian Mutual Assistance Association. Um, we have um, programming from um, youth programming um, and also walk-in um, services that deals with um, um, elderly and um, special needs um, students. Um, we also have the Manon program um, that um, we, um, our staff is in charge of some um, five cases with them. Yeah. Well, and I'm with the Royal Association for the Blind, and this topic is... Um, have, has been a concern of, of mine for many years. When people lose their sight, they often um, lose their, they have to lose their driver's license, um, often feel isolated when other members of the family get up to go to work and school and they're usually left home alone. Um, and think, looking into social isolation recently, um, it's become a hot topic. And in London, they have just appointed a minister of loneliness. So... And it looks like they've done some studies that isolation is one of the number one causes of um, death in this country with people feeling so isolated, even over some of the physical health um, things that go on. Um, so we wanted to have a discussion on social isolation and let people know um, maybe what it is, if they've heard about it, and how um, what's out there and might be available. So... Um, Tammy, can you tell us a little bit about what your agency might see in social isolation? Sure. Um, we do home visits um, for both families um, where there's a pregnancy. That's our early intervention partnerships program. And also when there is a documented developmental delay in a child who's under three years old. And um, oftentimes um, we're screening for depression symptoms um, due to hormonal fluctuations and in our, in our pregnancy program, but also after the baby is born to, to provide whatever support um, that they need. And then in our early intervention program, sometimes just having a life, a different phase of life, starting a family, possibly having a diagnosis of a developmental delay in a young child, um, the families can kind of turn inwards or, or just feel overwhelmed and not know where to turn. Wow. Rose, why don't you tell us you work with seniors, mm -hmm. I would assume, more often. Mostly, yeah. Um, what kind of things do you see in your um, organization? So we see some people um, like that you must see with macular degeneration, Absolutely. but we also see even just uh, hearing issues can isolate, you know, someone. Um, but we see a lot of disabilities and illness, and uh, especially in the palliative care. And um, those people are often living alone or just have someone checking in with them um, infrequently. Um, if they have Parkinson's or um, and can fall, that can create, you know, the fear of, you know, not being able to go out. So that lack of mobility, lack of transportation, if their license is taken away. Um, yeah, it's, it's, um, there's a lot of that out there. It's sad. So we try to connect them to resources when we can. And Sharifa, you were saying that your agency is a little different when, with yeah. isolation. Yeah, Why don't so you tell us about your agency? Mm -hmm. Yeah, our agency is trying to bridge the gap between um, the generations. You still have older generation um, who gone through the war, who um, grew in Cambodia and, and migrated here. And then you have the younger generation who's born here um, and is going to school and, and whatnot. So um, these are not like, you know, they're really young or very old. They're not working in... Um, and going out and, and hanging out with friends and stuff. So they're um, either going to schools or coming to an after school program or a summer program. Um, so in our culture, we kind of, it's a community, um, 
culture so that nobody is really ever alone. So the grandparents is taking care of the grandkids and um, families are always together, having meals together and, and all that stuff. So in Cameroon culture, social isolation is, is less. Um, but nowadays I'm observing that um, like from personal experience that some of our elders is also is being isolated as well. So they're at home, they're either, um, you know, the daughter or son is going out to work a lot and they're, you know, with the grandkids. And so, and sometimes I feel like, you know, how even with mom with pregnancy, they're at home by with their kids and they're isolated from other friends and stuff like that. So they go through a phase of depression and all that stuff. So that's why CMA is, um, is um, creating programs for older people to come and a safe space for older people to come and share about their experiences, about their home life at home and about um, and sharing hobbies and things like that and then sharing that knowledge with our after school program. So this way, you know, it's passing um, knowledge from older generation and the younger generation can bring in the energy and that vibrantness to the older people. And, you know, there's a saying that people need hugs and touches, you know, throughout the day before you start to feel like you're alone in the world. Um, there's there's always this word that that I grew up and um, my friend um, sang a song like Alone in the Crowd. Even though like, you're with a bunch of people, you can still feel alone because you don't have that connection, that camaraderie with another person. And that's where CMA kind of want to step in and say, you know what, you're not alone. Um, you want, you're here, you come to CMA, hang out, there's snacks and <laughs> drinks and whatnot, games to play. It's yeah. nice that you have the center, too, mm -hmm. um, that they can go to that one place. Yeah. We, most of our work is based on home visits, so yeah. we're, going, we're reaching out to them in their home. Um, but then we do also have some play groups for the early intervention um, families that we really encourage them to come with their child weekly to their play group so that they can have that interaction with other adults who may have similar you know, diagnoses or similar levels of, of skill with their child. Um, and then with our prenatal and newborn support program, um, each year we do 10 sessions of a support group um, and we try and embed activities and educational opportunities so that, you know, they're getting out of the house mm -hmm. and, and connecting with other people. So I think it's really nice that, you know, where we in Lowell are, are um, learning from the Cambodian culture and, and really trying to make sure that we're not leaving people by themselves. We have um, an adult program so that our adults can come in two days a week and we do a variety of activities and socialization because we've realized um, that most of our people would be home alone mm -hmm. all day. Um, some of them live alone and live independently. So if they don't, didn't have a place to go that understood the disability that they were dealing with, mm -hmm. that they don't have to explain why they need a little bit of extra help navigating the, um, the interior or the office or going out to a grocery store and mm -hmm. giving them that mm -hmm. kind of assistance or shopping or helping mm -hmm. them pick out a birthday card. Mm -hmm that it would be very difficult for them and feel even more isolated if they couldn't send a birthday card or had to have their spouse pick out the birthday mm -hmm. card for them. Right. Um, and what we've recently started, and I don't know if you have seen, um, for our group, our technology is very difficult for the blind mm -hmm. because of the expense um, as well as um, learning how to use it so they don't invest in technology because they don't know if they can use it mm -hmm. and they don't use technology. Um, most We just started an iPad training program for our folks mm -hmm. that we were able to get iPads and loan them to them so they can try them out and we're training them all on how to use them to see if they if they like it. Most of our people didn't even have an email address. That's uh -huh. how isolated they are, mm -hmm. that they couldn't email a son or a daughter that might not live in the area. Yeah. But um, we'll get, they're going to be able to do all that kind of stuff. And although that's a different, it doesn't help with isolation, but it does help that, like we all get excited when <laughs> you've got mail. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, I don't know if you, any of you use technology to try and reach out to folks. Um, sometimes I've, I've brought in my laptop to, um, you know, show them different areas or uh, whatever their culture is to um, go back because a lot of seniors like to reminisce and they don't have sure. anyone of their own generation to, you know, to enjoy <laughs> things with. Um, sometimes even just playing a song like a Dean Martin song, something, you know, they haven't heard anything sure. like that. They don't have that opportunity. Um, 
but even having connecting them to sometimes Meals on Wheels and just, I mean, the relationship that they develop sometimes is just with that person that comes in those five days a week. I see them giving hugs. I mean, it's, sure. you know, they might not always want to admit that they're uh, isolated or feel lonely, but, you know, you can see it because if you do sit down with them, the next thing you know, it's an hour's gone by because they enjoy, you know, having oh, someone. Absolutely. So I try to connect them um, to rides if, if possible. Um, if they won't do an adult daycare, at least try to um, get them to um, have someone coming in, whether if it's on hospice, we have volunteers, which is, you know, wonderful for people so they're not alone, but try to connect them to somebody so that someone's checking in with them. Um, yeah. yeah, technology is, is a funny thing because um, <laughs> even though that um, children use technology all the time with social media and all that stuff, and um, I'm more concerned for my um, students who are um, introverts, um, you know, who's um, always into their phone and communicating. And then there's also like, you know, cyberbullying mm -hmm. and things like that. So, um, like, that's also a social isolation as well. Mm -hmm. it's kind of, like, it goes back to my theory of, like, you know, alone in the crowd. Like, you're with friends, with families, you're, you know, having a meal, a celebration, but you're on your phone, you're, you're isolated. And then you, your families don't know if someone is actually targeting you and telling you to do different things and, and all that stuff sure. and um, you hear a lot of um, you know children who commit suicide because because of depression yeah. yeah because they're alone even though they're, they're with people but their soul is so alone they don't feel that connection and then on top of that if someone is telling them they're bad or their you know their character is not up to par to everybody else or like the way they look and stuff like that is is also really hard um, I think about um, as far as our special need um, community, um, you know, we have equipments that are technology-wise where they can press picture symbols, you know, schedules and things like that. And even that, sometimes, you know, they're isolated because they can't really verbally say or express themselves kind of cognitively on sure. what they're trying to do. So CMA is, is definitely um, think, uh, thinking of different ways on how to reach out to our community. and. Um, get them to celebrate the uniqueness and, and themselves and, and make that connection with our students. We also have play group as well mm -hmm. for our um, Cambodian families who, you know, we have a couple moms who just came from Cambodia and they have, you know, from two-year-olds and, and so they're, we're connecting them together and while the children are playing with the teachers, the mom and dad can kind of connect and share stories with each other like, hey, you know, what services have you tried? What schools have you tried to go to that's best for the students and stuff like that? Yeah. Going back to the technology piece, mm -hmm. um, I definitely see some of the places where you have to be cautious about yeah. it. Right. Like for our children that we're working with, especially the ones who have autism spectrum disorder mm -hmm. um, or other you know, speech delays or, or, or communication limitations, um, sometimes we can use those iPads or, or picture communications so that they can get out of themselves and communicate exactly what it is that they need as opposed to having a tantrum or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, there's always the pros and the cons. Sure. <clears throat> um, but sometimes the communication, you know, can, can pull them out into, um, the, the technology can pull them out into communicating. Um, with Effectively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things that I think about a lot is... Um, getting people that have some, some um, abilities to get out and volunteer themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, that often makes people feel really good that they are able to help mm -hmm. somebody else. Right. Um, I don't know if there's other techniques or things that you might do to get young, young moms out there to do something. I, it might be not, it's, I, I would think it would be <laughs> difficult for that, but it would be great to have a meeting space for your young moms and yeah. just to get together. Do they exchange numbers and sometimes, connect like sometimes that? Sometimes they do connect, like Strapo was saying, with mm -hmm. the play group that they have, mm -hmm. um, especially within our play groups. Um, it's wonderful when we are able to see one mom or one dad, because, you know, we work, you know, mm -hmm. the dads mm -hmm. can come to play group sure. too. Yeah. Um, but connecting with somebody else, <coughs> and, you know, when you see that invitation to the birthday party or something, go between mm -hmm. them. Nice. Um, or if you see somebody, you know, picking up or dropping off or arranging to, you know, to McDonald's together. I mean, mm -hmm. it's nice to see when they when they do put themselves out there. And, um, yeah. 
you must deal with more having volunteers come in to help right. with, with folks. For hospice, but uh, we, don't, we can't do it for palliative, which is kind of hard. But we do um, try to connect people. Um, for example, we have um, grief groups because in, in, you know, the elderly population often, you know, or even the caregiver that we've worked with for months if they've been on palliative or hospice, um, now they're you know, left alone after sure. their loved one dies. So we do run um, a couple of different grief groups. And we really try to encourage them, you know, when they're ready to, to come out. Because just having that shared experience and just hearing someone else, I think you can always learn um, from others. It's really great in the groups to hear, well, you know, why don't you try this? You know, come to the senior center with me and right. um, to get out there. I worked with one woman whose husband was on palliative care and the wife was feeling very kind of stuck in the house. And she, I would notice she was knitting a lot and crocheting both. And, um, she said, well, I'm making these blankets, but I don't know what, you know, what to do. I'm kind of bored. And I said, well, you know, I know a lot of people that can use little hats for, you know, cancer. Um, and so she started. I mean, she keeps sending me all these hats oh. that she's making, and I can give them to, you know, our nurses carry them with them, you know, especially in the wintertime to keep sure. them warm. So, sure. yeah. And, and then she felt like she had more meaning in her Absolutely. day. Yeah. The opportunity to help someone right. else takes your mind off right. your own. Exactly. Your own issues, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, one of the other things I read, though, is people should exercise, mm -hmm. and not probably in this weather, go out for a walk sometimes, right. even just getting out of the house for some folks. Mm -hmm. But you have folks that could take a walk with the baby in the stroller. Yes, definitely. It's good, too, to have the sun exposure. Yes. <laughs> it, it helps with mood. It helps to stave off jaundice as well mm -hmm. for the newborn babies. Um, but it definitely gets those endorphins going. And, mm. um, you know, especially when we're doing with the prenatal and the newborn support, when we're visiting those new moms, we are um, regularly screening them for depression. And that's, you know, one of the things that they can do without having to go to therapy because, you know, there's a six-month wait list yeah. if they want in-home therapy. Or without having to, um, you know, take a medication or something. That that's something that they can do when they have the, the you know, five minutes here, mm -hmm. ten minutes there um, in their home. And it's, it's more natural. Mm -hmm. I know some of our folks um, don't um, walk very far because they don't, they, um, don't feel safe and going, venturing too far away from their own homes. But I know a lot of the senior centers do offer um, um, treadmills and devices and exercise stuff and, and folks there to help our, our folks. So they do use the senior center. Mm -hmm. A lot of seniors um, would be eligible to go to their local senior center mm -hmm. to um, try out some of the equipment and yeah. obviously that gets you out and talking to other people mm -hmm. and, and it's free. Right. They said join a gym but mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. but for seniors I would think the, the senior centers would be an excellent place right. for people to go and meet others and mm -hmm. I know they do lunches and dances and things right. like that so an opportunity. I know the other thing is really hard for people just to walk into a place that you've never mm -hmm. been to before. I know right. with our organization we've found that People have told us they we used that they had walked by a hundred times before mm -hmm. they had um, had the the will to walk in the right. door, um, mm -hmm. not wanting to admit that they were blind. Um, mm -hmm. So we put a welcome day on our schedule once Aww. a month. That's great. Um, every the first Tuesday of every month is welcome day, so mm -hmm. that even though people may not make it on that day, mm -hmm. we feel like it's a welcoming thing to do yeah. that people mm -hmm. can come. Mm -hmm. and a welcome right. so that we try and encourage people to come and get out and, and I know transportation is another major issue for folks. It's a very big issue. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. So CMA um, has some, you know, um, we piloted some um, yoga programs last summer um, um, in cooperation with the um, Lowell National Park and um, so it's, it was really successful. It's free for the public um, so the class was um, 30, 30 people max and um, our instructor, uh, Michelle Dang, um, she teaches from children to um, seniors. So she was able to navigate from you know, the older to the younger mm -hmm. on how to, to move your body and stuff like that. And I know like 15 minutes of exercise is, is wonderful because mm -hmm. um, I know the cow does the um, little walks as well. Um, you, know, you get to know your community, you, you meet new people, you get to hear the history of Lowell mm -hmm. um, and 
you get your exercise while you're at it, I'm you sure. know. So it's and you don't have to each actually have to socialize with anyone because someone is speaking and telling you what's going on in in Lowell and all that stuff. So that's some of the things that are, are available. And I um, CMA is also starting a, a meditation group as well. Um, so um, look for that um, on on our website and stuff. So people can come like I think um, early in the morning at ten or eleven, something like that. There's red light refreshments it's mm-hmm. also free and um, you come meditate and share your talents mm-hmm. and stuff and then I'll recruit you to share it back with my after school <laughs> program yeah. yeah I always believe in sharing hobbies and mm-hmm. talents right. with people you know because mm-hmm. if you know a skill why hide it mm-hmm. you know shine it so bright that other yes. people can learn it share it and and mm-hmm. you know and when when has the meditation program started it's um so we um it's going to start this month oh, like, nice. as far as like a certain day um i'm not quite sure what day yet so that's why i'm saying to refer back to um our program cuz mm-hmm. i know again like, um once a month on tuesday uh, from 6 o'clock um, from 5 to 6, we have um, elderly come in and they can play chess, they can chat, and they do poetry and all that stuff. So that's an, um, an evening group. So depending on which time is available for you, you can come in the morning, come for evening. It's, you know, at least once a month um, to, to come out and be in the community. And we want to have a safe space for them to, sure. to hang out. So not only at the senior center, but at CMA and in the community, you know. Low, the Los National Park is always open, and there's always you know free activities. There are a lot yeah. of free activities mm-hmm. too. Especially, um, I love their um, sunset cruise over at the boathouse, so people can go on the um, pontoon boat mm-hmm. and um, on the Merrimack River. It's free. Um, mm-hmm. They can do a sunset cruise. No. Uh huh. No. no. Yeah. I know when I uh, was a young mom years ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would take the kids and jump on the trolley just because mm-hmm. the kid would be kids would be so excited yeah. right. to see the trolley, mm-hmm. and you would get a chance to just ride along, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. look at the buildings, and so there's yeah. a lot. There is a lot of free mm-hmm. activities yeah. if you mm-hmm. if you really take a look and look at the national parks or mm-hmm. the the pontoon. I didn't realize it was free, but that's well, it's only on Tuesdays. So oh. other days uh-huh. are charged. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. So that's why I always and of course you. On Tuesdays, they have, I think, um, the motorcycle musical night as well. Mm-hmm. So you go there for the entertainment. There's an ice cream shop over next door if you wanted mm-hmm. to, if you're able to. Like, I'm lactose intolerant, so I can't. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then, of course, like you have your beach there. I mean, Lowell has a beach. Mm-hmm. I couldn't, I, I didn't know. I didn't know because I'm from New Hampshire, <laughs> and so I would always drive like a half an hour or so to go to the beach. And when I found out, I was like, "No, I said beach. I go to it." <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. And um, what other kinds of things would you do for folks that are feeling isolated? Do you have any suggestions for folks that can't get out? Yeah, and there's so many of of them. Sure. So if, if obviously if they're on hospice and having volunteers and myself or our spiritual coordinator go in. But if on, on palliative, um, there's a few people um, that I go in just because they're isolated and they like to talk and um, whether they reminisce or they have a hobby. I have one guy who um, is just so intelligent and loves to share you know, what he knows about history. And, um, and so I just really go and, and listen. Um, and, you know, he says he gets a, a lot out of it. I don't feel like I'm doing much than other than listening, but yeah. um, he looks forward to that. And um, it's amazing how they look forward even to their aides that come in besides the Meals on Wheels. Sure. But um, the Merrimack Valley Elder Services just began, just yeah, the it. Healthy Ideas, which I don't know how new that is, but I, I think if you call their office um, in, in Lawrence, they have people that'll come out and do like a depression screening um, and then they can connect them to services. So if they're not, you know, on palliative or hospice, there are. And then even AARP, I looked on online yesterday and they had a number of things that people could do um, to connect, um, you know, with the outside world because it's so important. Sure. Yeah. I know one of my volunteers does elder services and he's matched one-on-one with a senior Mm -hmm that needs somebody to come talk to them or right. take them out and have a cup of coffee right. with them right. and um, becomes like a, mm-hmm. you know, a lifelong friend right. to be able to, um, and he's had several matches over mm-hmm. the years and he, he right. just loves getting to know the folks that, mm-hmm. um, so that people should reach out to elder right. services mm-hmm. if it's something that um, 
they're feeling very lonely. Mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised that England would have a yeah minister. a minister <laughs> right. of loneliness mm -hmm. that um, and because they were saying so many seniors live alone um, mm -hmm. once a spouse or a significant right. other dies, right. then they're left alone mm -hmm. and. Like you said, they've spent their whole life taking care of uh, right. the other person or right. uh, is feeling really, mm -hmm. you know, not knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing that we haven't mentioned are children that live so far away mm -hmm. now. I know my family is dealing with this. My mother-in-law is in Florida and mm -hmm. my um, her hus husband died recently. And mm -hmm. how do you make sure that they're, right. you know, getting the needs met? Um, right. She's in a, a very active community that... Um, does check in on her, but mm -hmm. it's a long distance. Yeah. How do you take care right. of somebody that's long distance? That I just found um, there are some services that will call you daily just to make sure that they're okay. Because you know, if you're a son or daughter, you might not check in more than a couple times a week. But what about those other days? Are they right. okay? And if they don't call in or answer the phone, then someone checks to make sure that they are okay, just yeah. for safety. I you know that's a. Um, but yeah, the one-on-one -on -one people so need. Yeah, need like that. my mom has moved in with me. She's um, she's 82, so um, I'm always in the community. I'm working, you know, 48 hours, you know, 80 hours a week type of thing because I'm out doing different things and stuff, you know, city council meetings and and everything, and out there kind of getting to know my community. So my mom is constantly alone by herself in our big ha um, in a big home. Um, so I usually have um, my pastor, um, you know, go over and do Bible study. So, uh, like, there'll be five or six people go over and work w with her. And, you know, they'll share a meal and, and they talk and they laugh and they chat and stuff. And that's, like, the first time, like, she was with us, um, she was depressed because mm -hmm. she was by herself. I mean, even though she can walk to go different places. But, you know, when you're scared, you're in Lowell, like, in a new place, you don't know what's going on. And even the weather, you know, it's true. because you don't want to be walking on ice and, and all that stuff. Right. And for somebody to come into the home and just and do that, like, I can tell the difference when she has Bible study and when she doesn't. Because, mm -hmm. like, she's out and about and laughing and talking and mm -hmm. talking about, you know, who came and their stories and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes when I'm able, I bring her to CMA and she volunteers there at our after school program and she teaches them different things and, and, and talk about, you know, our history and stuff like that. So I always think, like, you know, if, if you have a skill set, if you are, you know, retired, school teachers, retired science, you know, engineering, whatever, giving up back to community, volunteering, like CMA is always looking for somebody to, to volunteer their time and, and be a mentor. Like we have a young professional mentor program. I'm having, a, like last year we had 15 young, um, young professionals and I had five mentors. I'm like, I need more <laughs> older people who want to give back to the kids and, you know, to shape up because... I know growing up, like in high school, my mom worked 24 hours a day. I come home to an empty house. Yeah. Food was always on the table, but my brother and my sister and I were always at home by ourselves. Our TV was our babysitter, basically. <laughs> but like um, my mom arranged it, though, that um, our landlord would you know, keep an eye on us um, if something was to go wrong and stuff. But at any rate, like, yeah, we need mentors. You know, being a mentor to a younger generation, to like if you were an older, sure. to a mentor, to a single mom, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a teenager, it doesn't have to be an infant or anything like that, just to be with someone. Yeah. Well, I think we're coming just to the end of our time. Mm -hmm. I'd like to mm -hmm. thank you ladies for what a, a really interesting discussion and um, thank the Lowell Telecommunications for hosting the issue at hand. Thank you and have a great day. Mm -hmm.